Hello. Hello, hello. I'm excited to talk about this idea uh, that we each have our own do-it-yourself healthy eating approach. And we naturally have quite a bit of confidence in our eating approach, something I've given a lot of thought to, partly because I had a lot of confidence in my healthy eating approach, and I really needed to be able to question it uh, to be able to discover what works. And I find as I help other women and some men change their eating to really use an evidence-based approach that's really predictably and reliably effective, there's always a certain amount of unlearning we have to do, things that we really believe are good for us that may not really be good for us, right? Um, and, and approaches. So it's just natural. Each of us has to come up with our best understanding about what's good to eat, right? We do this several times every day. We have to believe that we know what we're doing. I know what tastes good. I know what's convenient. And I look at, you know, everyone that I work with, they study what's healthy and they look at packages and they look at ingredients and they read articles and they read books. And we feel like we have it pretty well figured out. And at the same time, why is there some new information today that is shooting down something that I read yesterday and what on earth can we count on, right? So we don't wanna just stay open to every piece of information out there. That's, go that's not gonna lead anywhere successful. At the same time, I'm gonna encourage you today to hold what you believe about healthy eating a little lightly and think about the evidence that you based it on. It's, a, it's epistemological inquiry. Let's question some of our beliefs, where they come from and whether we should believe them strongly. And for me, it really ended up helping to find some kind of accurate resources to go to, to figure out what's actually healthy to eat, what's good for my health in terms of illness, what's good for my health in terms of my cells and my organs and my functioning and my longevity, and what's good for getting slender and staying slender for good. Like, I don't want to get into this diet roller coaster. I know it's destructive to my body. It's destructive to my mental health, right? I just don't want to be someone who's dieting all the time. Doesn't make sense when I think about it. So I finally got really committed to questioning my own understandings about what's healthy to eat. And that made a massive difference for me being able to see, well, what does the research actually say? And then being able to do something that's proven in the research to work. So when I help other smart, successful women and some men learn an evidence-based eating approach that gives vastly better results, like for transforming our health and uh, our weight, really resetting our weight to a healthier level where like it used, my body used to defend my higher weight, right? And we, we see that happening. Like we get to this weight and it feels really hard to get below it again. And then maybe we get to another higher weight and it doesn't feel like we can get below that again. Our, our weight has a set point. Well, I wanted to not just lose weight. I wanted to reset my set point to a healthier place. And I was looking for research that would help me understand what's best for eating, for a healthy body, for minimizing symptoms, for minimizing disease processes, for maximizing my health and vitality and my, my longevity, you know, so I could live a long life doing the things I want to do, enjoying my life instead of worrying about my eating, right? I didn't want to stay focused on my eating the rest of my life. So what I found for myself and I found working with other people is there's a certain amount of unlearning of things that we believe about what's healthy to eat. Does that make sense? I forget to introduce myself, so I have notes. Hi, I'm Dr. Ginny Trierweiler and I help smart, successful women who are tired of trying to figure out what's healthy to eat and nothing is working anymore. I help them figure out how to lose weight so it stays off so they can get slender for good and even start craving the foods that are good for us. Uh, that's one of the pieces that I'm most proud of. First, we need to know what's healthy to eat, and then we have to find a way to really thoroughly enjoy it and crave it like we currently might be craving things that aren't good for us. So a little of my story shows how I had certain beliefs that were holding me back from success. So one of my beliefs was I used to get faint a lot. I would get positional dizziness. 
And so I would be working, working, working. I remember when I was working in, in nursing homes and I would be writing notes and, you know, doing outreach to families. And then I would get up to go see patients and I would get dizzy and have to lean against the wall and uh, people would come rushing over. It was really, really embarrassing. And I developed an understanding and a belief about what this was and what I needed to do. Uh, I believed it was low blood sugar and it meant I need to eat protein really often, like every few hours. I believed it very strongly, almost like a religious belief, and it was a, a belief that was very resistant to change. So if I read research that said it's really uh, better not to eat so often as far as our health and as far as our insulin sensitivity goes, et cetera, I thought it, that doesn't apply to me. Now, sometimes we might be right about that, but lots of these beliefs that we develop aren't really based in reality. And being, uh, for me, looking at the research suggesting it might be better what, to do what humans did until about 60 years ago, snacking in between meals is something that has become ubiquitous. This is something that's really serving the food industry, especially the snack food industry, it really isn't something humans tend to need, but I really believed I needed it. So when I finally went to the research to study this stuff, what's actually known about eating and health and weight? Every time I saw that information, I was like, nope, I don't believe that one. And I, it's only my scientific discipline that helped me. No, just go look at what the, what the research says and see if you can learn something from it and quit fighting it, right? I also think about Lily, one of these really smart, successful women that I worked with. Lily always used to be able to stay really slender. She was a really active person. She was a very disciplined person. She, she believed she had this figured out. I just have to, if I start gaining weight, I just have to eat less and exercise more. And that's what the doctors say. And that's what most of the articles and nutritionists say, et cetera. This definitely works, she believed. And then when she hit menopause, everything changed. She immediately, she says within a month of the, her first hot flash, she gained 13 pounds. Um, and then for the next 10 years, she kept trying harder at eat less, exercise more. So she had gotten, so she wasn't eating very much. She was very miserable and she wasn't losing weight either. She was gaining more and more weight. So she finally decided to put a certain amount of trust in me and I taught her this eating approach that works predictably and reliably and helped her through the worries that this is going to make me gain more weight. You're, you're telling me to eat more and I'm just going to gain more weight. I helped her be able to just give it a try. I helped her understand the mechanisms that make this work. And as she started eating this way, she started very naturally and easily losing the excess weight. And it has stayed off and she loves eating this way. She feels really, really fortunate to be eating this abundance of nutritious foods. And it's really a happy place to be, to know exactly how to eat to get these great results. She had to be willing to let go of some of the things she believed and try something different, right? I want to tell one more story. So Colleen is another beautiful, successful, amazing woman that I worked with. And um, she had very strong attachments to wine and to sweet things. And she's someone who was never super overweight, but she would go up and down in her weight. And she started getting concerned um, that this wasn't serving her, this way of eating and drinking wasn't serving her, wasn't giving her the great life it felt like it should be giving her. But she had these strong beliefs like it's really important to keep a little of this so that I don't feel deprived. That's a cultural idea that I hear a lot. I have to be able to have a little of this or I'll feel deprived. But trying to keep a little of things that she was really pretty addicted to, that she that she uh, that tended to escalate for her, that she found it was hard to stop once she got started, that caused her a lot of stress and obsession. It just really kept her in cravings. Like so, she believed I just crave these things. I can never get rid of these cravings. So I just have to try to manage this, and it's going to be it's always going to be really hard and painful. And those beliefs kept her pretty stuck. It kept her from experiencing and from doing the behaviors that would lead to biological and neuropsychological changes that would allow her to thoroughly enjoy real whole 
healthy foods. So she also decided, I'm just gonna trust Ginny for a period of time and do what she says about eating this way and see if what she says about, I can crave the, the real whole healthy foods is true. And it's so wonderful to see her results because she loves her weight. She only thought she wanted to lose four pounds, but she dropped 14 pounds and she's at a weight she absolutely feels super comfortable and healthy in. Uh, she's bounding all over, all over the world with her husband nowadays, and she doesn't miss those non-nutritious food-like substances. She feels so much more liberated and free and so much more energetic. She doesn't have symptoms of anxiety and depression anymore that she lived with for a really long time, been able to go off all these various supplements she was taking, and just is living her best life. So to be able to live our best life and learn how to eat in a way that actually gives us our best health, our slender body, really requires that we get some guidance around what's good to eat. Really hard to find in our environment. I recognize that. It's really hard to find good, true answers. So if the answers you're getting uh, feel like, oh good, I'm so happy that's true, that might be something to question because what we want to believe that's uh, if it's also actually really serving the people selling us something, we might want to question it, right? So this is my big message today is question your beliefs about what's healthy to eat. Our, our history in this, in this society, and I grew up in the United States, I currently live in Mexico, the Western diet has transported all over the world. It's what most people are eating these days, and it's really, really problematic for our health. And so our history, what we grew up eating, thinking is good to eat, is not a good guide anymore. You know, 200 years ago, it probably was a pretty good guide, but it's a problem now. Uh, our current cultural, our, our current eating culture is greatly misleading us. The most highly processed food-like substances that are the least nutritious, maybe toxic, maybe addictive, are packaged and promoted as not that bad or even healthy. Like if you look at all the ways they're telling you this is healthy. One that annoys me a lot. I tried, I got away from grains. I did all the exploration a lot of people are doing about grains and gluten and all these things. And eventually started realizing whole grains actually have a lot of benefit. And in fact, my last 15 pounds came off when I finally understood this. But processed grains are a whole nother story. But when you look at packaged cereals or packaged breads or crackers that are made with flour, that flour is something that started as a whole grain and then was highly processed and refined. And it's highly processed grains along with sugars that are causing huge, huge problems for our health and for our weight. They are the most highly profitable for the food industry. So they're the most highly promoted. So when you buy those, those packaged uh, highly processed grains, it tends to say whole grain on the front. This is super misleading and unhelpful to us, makes me really mad. So we're being led to think a lot of things that are bad for us are good for us or not that bad for us as long as you don't have too much. And there's this whole litany of cultural beliefs that support eating and drinking a lot of highly processed, non-nutritious food-like substances. So as a culture now, we're eating far more of those things than we realize. This is a hard thing to talk about because most of the women I work with feel like I don't eat that stuff, I don't drink that stuff. We are eating and drinking more of it than we realize. So as a culture in the United States, it's more than half of the food the average person is eating. You could be doing way better than the two people on either side of you and still not be doing very well, still be eating far more of that than you realize. And we're part of the problem with that is how toxic these things can be, how cravingful, how addictive they can be. Part of the problem is they're crowding out the real whole nutritious foods our bodies really need. So our bodies aren't able to heal. Our cells aren't able to regenerate the way they should. It's causing serious increases in overweight and obesity in our culture. 
and a kind of overweight and obesity that goes with high blood pressure and heart disease, uh, diabetes, dementia, and cancer. If you haven't attended my masterclass on the secret to easy, natural, sustainable weight loss, I encourage you to check that out because I really put a lot of information to help you see this happening into that masterclass. You can learn when the next one is by going to slenderforgood.com. Sign up to get the roadmap for, uh, to sustainable weight loss. I really want people to understand getting uh, healthy eating and sustainable weight loss is completely different from dieting. The diet culture in our society is just leading to terrible results. And I really want to help people escape that. So I do this masterclass at no charge. I think my next one as I as I record this is November 1st. But if you go to slenderforgood.com, you can learn when the next one of those is. You can get information about up upcoming events and regular content about how truly healthy eating and sustainable weight loss works and how it's completely different from dieting. Now, how do I know this? I studied the research directly, finally, for my own self to figure out, okay, the popular media is not leading me to information that's giving good results. Every time I read something, I go, that sounds true. I'm going to do that. And it's not leading to good results. And it turns out society wide, it's not leading to good results. So I thought, I'm a scientist. I can go directly to the research and use my scientific discipline to discover, you know, what is actually known is good for eating and health and sustainable weight loss, the unicorn. People can lose weight, but keeping it off is the real trick. Even then, because I'm, I'm trained as a scientist, I had to keep forcing myself back to check, your, check yourself. You're arguing with the research. Just learn what's known to be good for our bodies. And then you can decide whether you're gonna eat it and drink it or not, but just learn what's known. Right? I kept finding answers that conflicted with things I believed. That's hard for a human being. So I am appreciative of my training. Eventually, the research guided me to four clear fundamental principles to guide my eating approach. Right, they, And when I looked at it, they weren't the principles I was following exactly. It even led me to really clear specific quantities of proteins and fats, how much fruits and vegetables, how much whole grains should I be eating? And just as the research suggested, following these principles, eating these quantities produced dramatic results for my health and my life, right? I could barely walk when I finally found this way of eating. Now I can hike in the mountains again. Um, so it really changed pain and inflammation, all kinds of systems, my metabolic functioning, and my weight just fell off. The excess 60 pounds I'd gained Really, I feel like it just kind of fell off. It was quite natural and easy when I figured out how to eat right. And now I've observed the same thing with thousands of people. I keep an eye on communities that are eating this way. And I've personally guided dozens of people through this process to awesome results. And all of us ended up surprised. It's not really hard. We thought weight loss was hard because we've had lousy results in the past. We weren't able to sustain it. We had all these cravings. It's not actually hard when you learn exactly how to eat. It's not sad. It's not depressing. It's not difficult. It's just different, right? We can do different when it works. It can become thoroughly enjoyable. It can become easy. It makes sense. We love the results and we love eating this way. So I wanna leave you with one other concept here. Everyone, all the women that I know, we, we prioritize eating healthy. But I wanna tell you there's, there's an order of these priorities that I found I shifted and it really made a big difference. So my priorities when I look back were, I need to enjoy it, it needs to be pleasurable, flavorful, it needs to be convenient and fast and easy, these are priorities of the primitive brain. The primitive brain says, I, I want pleasure. I want to escape pain. I feel hungry. I want to eat, right? I feel uncomfortable. I want to do something. I want to eat or drink something that's going to make the discomfort go away. And I want it to be as efficient and easy as possible to require as little thought as possible. So it's natural that those are the priorities we have. Now, 
It used to be throughout millennia in human history. If we ate what was pleasurable and what relieved the hunger pangs, uh, we were likely to find things that were nutritious and going to give us good health. And most people stayed slender. We don't live in those times anymore. And it's, it's frustrating and upsetting. But now we need to prioritize a little bit differently. We all are looking at packaging to guide us on what's healthy because we know people aren't healthy the way we're eating now. But unfortunately, the package is, packaging is misleading us. So I was eating for pleasure and enjoyment. I was eating for convenience and I wanted it to be healthy. What that led me to do is go to the health food stores, go down the health food aisles, look at the ingredients, find things that I know are pleasurable to me and that I know are convenient, and then look for something on the packaging that tells me it's healthy. That was leading to terrible results. So I started realizing I've got to flip the priorities here. In this environment, I got to prioritize knowing what's healthy to eat first and then caring about, okay, how do I really thoroughly enjoy that? So for example, um, <laughs> I like salad, but when I first learned uh, what is actually healthy, how much vegetables do I have to eat? I just piled that much lettuce on a plate. Oh, it's so unappealing, right? It didn't look good to me at all. So I started making it a little bit of a project. How can I more thoroughly enjoy salad? So what I did is I started looking for what I, I went to restaurants looking at when I really enjoy a salad, what do they put on it? And I started figuring out the things to put on my salad that made it really, really enjoyable. I have a giant salad almost every day and it's got peppers, bell peppers, which turn out to be really enjoyable when you get uh, flavor technologies out of your palate radishes and I put celery and purple cabbage, partly because the color makes it look really good and because I know that's really nutritious. And I put nuts and seeds and I put cheese, etc. Anyway, it ends up being something I thoroughly enjoy and look forward to every day. And it's really nourishing and it's the kind of thing that completely transformed my health, right? So the pain and inflammation is all gone, etc. So my priorities now are health first because in this environment, if I don't do that, what I'm eating is not going to be very healthy. And then I made pleasure and enjoyment and convenience a priority, right? So that's something I recommend is flip your priorities, look for what's healthy and nutritious first, and then how do I make this thoroughly enjoyable, tasty and convenient for me, right? So it really requires getting super clear what's actually truly healthy to eat rather than believing the packaging uh, of people who are going to make a profit, even if it's killing you slowly. Then find ways to make it uh, easy and enjoyable. Does that make sense? So what do you think? Can you question some of your beliefs about what's healthy and good to eat and really get more dedicated to searching for what's actually truly healthy for my body? That's my recommendation to you. So your do-it-yourself healthy eating approach can really start leaning a lot higher up the, up the scale. I'm going to give you one more, one more number. Uh, when scientists look at the standard American or standard Western diet and evaluate it for nutritional quality, how nutritious is this for the human body? On a scale of 1 to 100, they only give the Western diet an 11. Pretty bad, right? Pretty, pretty terrible. <laughs> you can see why we're getting terrible results in our society. So even those of us who feel like I'm doing, I eat healthy. I already eat pretty healthy. What if we're, we could be twice as good as average and only be scoring a 22 out of 100. We could be eating way, way, way better than most people and only be scoring a 50 out of 100 and be it's frustrating so many people are following the 80 20 rule i eat healthy 80 percent of the time is that even true and then i i eat treats you know non-nutritious food like substances 20 percent of the time and i should be getting good results because it takes a lot of effort to do that 80 percent of the time 
I should be getting good results is arguing with reality. I really started training myself. Quit arguing with reality. Find out what your body actually needs and love yourself enough to prioritize giving your body what it needs meal after meal, day after day. Quit arguing that 80-20 should be good enough. It isn't. You're not going to get great results with the 80-20 rule when it comes to healthy food. Humans have to be eating healthy food more than that way more than we're doing in our society. Um, we can thoroughly enjoy it and it can become easy and convenient once we're really committed to it and we learn what works. If you'd like to know more about it, go to slenderforgood.com, reach out to me. I love having dialogue about this. Um, I love helping people break through this kind of jail we're in, in terms of the way we're eating. It's not okay with me that women in their 50s and 60s are not well, that we're in a state of decline. We're feeling like, like frauds, like I'm trying to eat healthy, but I'm getting lousy results. It's not okay with me. The world needs us. So I would love to meet you. All right, take care.